Very bad video. Hello and welcome to my first blog. So anyway, the first blog is about an event which, while not necessarily a defining moment, it certainly did illustrate who I am. But first, a little backstory. As a kid, my mom would drop my brother and two sisters and I off at the local theater to watch a double feature. Um, I think truthfully now looking back on it, I think it was more for like my mom and dad to have a couple hours of freedom and peace and quiet on the weekend than actually like a big treat to us, but it's okay, it was still fun. Anyway, the thing I remember about seeing, I don't know if we actually were allowed to watch you know, horror movies and scary stuff, but I remember the previews for sure. Um, for the B movies, you know, and the sci-fi movies, you like, you know, like The Creature from the Black Lagoon or Invasion from X from Mars. And somehow they always seem to have this really stupid insist assistant in it. Not because she would end up, not because she was really stupid, because, but because somehow she'd end up in a swamp in a tight skirt and high spiked heeled pumps and she'd be running from the monster. She would eventually fall down and would start yelling, help me, help me, help me. And then of course, usually faint. And that's the part that I thought was just so stupid. Not because I'm some kind of a big feminist or anything like that, but because what the heck is she doing in a swamp in a tight skirt and high heels? If it had been me, I'd have been like the heck with modesty. I'd had my skirt hiked up to my waist, my shoes off and running as fast as I could. And if I tripped, yes, I'd still yell for help. But by gosh, I'd be hitting that monster with the spikes on my heels as hard as I could. Anyway, so I always envisioned myself, because this was also like big time, you know, James Bond type movies were out too. And I envisioned myself more like James Bond or Wonder Woman or, you know, Dirty Harry, come on, punk, make my day. Anyway, so that's the end of the backstory. It's now many years later and I'm 18, which by the way, when I was 18, this was also during the disco era. And in the, I live in Colorado and you could drink three, two beer at 18. So I actually worked it after the gold, which gold, after the gold rush, which was the most popular three, two disco in town, by the way. And um, to tell you a little bit about the disco, it, it was two floors. Most nights they just have the first floor open, but if it was really busy, they could open up the second floor. Well, it's Christmas break and it's a weekend and it's very, very busy. And I'm working on the second floor. Anyway, I don't know why. It's just something I've observed. And that is that for some reason, college guys seem to get their testosterone flowing after finals. What, what finals somehow make testosterone flow, I don't know. But there are a whole bunch of fights breaking out on the first floor, so they send all the waitresses from the first floor upstairs, and then the, all except for one bouncer and the assistant manager, all the rest of the bouncers went downstairs. Well, of course, as you can imagine, pretty soon a fight breaks out on the second floor. So the bouncer and the manager go over to break it up. Anyway, the bouncer has his guy in some kind of a hold and is taking him outside, but the manager lost control of his guy and the guy has thrown him to the ground or the floor and is sitting on him and hitting him in the face. And all the waitresses are going, oh my gosh, this is horrible, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And, and I'm sitting there and going, yeah, it's really horrible and I'm gonna stop it. So I go over and pull the guy off my friend. But I'm gonna stop here again and explain a few things. First of all, I'm really tall, or, well, yeah, I'm really tall. I'm five feet 11, so I'm still taller than most men, but, you know, I'm not as tall as some women. But anyway, when you're as tall as I am and I have long legs, it's very, it's, it's nearly impossible. Actually, it is impossible. It's not nearly, it is impossible to find a uniform pants that are long enough to wear. So I'm wearing flats with my sexy halter top black pantsuit uniform. So here, check one. I was not in high heel pumps, and two, I'm not in a tight skirt. 
So here I'm not the stupid assistant. Anyway, so I pull this guy off and he turns around and most likely thinking I'm like another bouncer interfering with his rush of testosterone and so on and so forth. And he turns around and comes eye to eye with a girl the same height as he is, which usually, truthfully, that'll throw most men off right away anyway. But, you know, he's standing there staring me in and he just freezes. Now, now this is my moment. My moment when I will learn how I react under pressure. Do I say something tough like, yeah, punk, make my day. Nope. I shake my finger at him and say, now you be good. Yep. In conflict, I become my mother, my grandmother. And if I had an aunt, I'd become her too. Maybe I become Sister Sarah at church, whatever. At this point, he totally and completely freezes. My eyes probably got as big as saucers because if I was just sad, I'm just like horrified. And we just stand there staring at each other. We stood at least long enough for the manager to get off the floor and put the guy in a hold and drag him outside. Although actually I think he was still kind of like numb from, now you be good, and he went out very peacefully. Anyway, I become this huge hero. Everybody's just like, oh my God, you're so amazing. And what did you say to him? He just froze. And, and I tell them I don't remember because I am so horrified by now that you be good. Anyway, that was obviously a long time ago. And I haven't broken up any fights since, well, other than my daughter's fighting. But I have also come to grips with the fact that when I'm in a stressful situation, I'm going to turn into my mother, which truthfully, she was an amazing woman. And I miss her so much, so I think it's a really good thing. And that's it for this bad video. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to explain about, A, what my videos, my very bad videos are going to be. Basically, it's going to be me doing a craft um, and telling a story. Because truthfully, one of my favorite things to do is to have someone over and just sit and chat and do crafts. Um, can't always have people over, but I can always talk and I always can do crafts. So wait, what the heck? These are crepe paper flowers, if you couldn't guess already. When buying crepe paper, let me recommend that you buy the higher weight or density crepe. Um, they'll stand up, crepe paper will stand up a lot better. Um, Italian crepe paper is also, I think, the best. You you don't have to worry too much about it if you buy a good quality crepe paper. If it gets wet, with the exception of red, I don't know why red, but they will. if they get wet, they're not going to bleed. So that's always a good thing. Anyway, so one of the points I want to make is when you're doing the things like I'm trying to illustrate in my video with um, regards to stretching the crepe paper to make the leaves look a little bit more, I don't know what that word would be. I have no clue. But anyway, when they spread out, is to do with a very light touch. A lot of times when I'm going to be doing making crepe paper flowers or something, I will cut, uh, cut extra leaves or petals, mainly because I'll end up tearing some if I get too aggressive. But, you know, use it between the fleshy part of your finger and your thumbnail and just kind of pull it gently apart. And you'll want to do this a lot of times for roses or in this case for these poppies. Anyway, until next time, take care. Bye-bye.